Good morning. Today we are going to be doing some cleaning motivation. So if you have to clean your house or your room or something like that, then pop this on in the background and we can do it together. I need to get in and do a little bit of cleaning, especially here in my bedroom, which is where I'm going to start. I'm also thinking I should probably just reorganize and tidy that wardrobe behind me. I am going to start with my bed first because I feel like I'm doing two things at once whenever I do a load of washing. So I'm going to strip the bedding, pop it in the wash and then come in here and finish cleaning. I filmed this video over three days and when I was editing the footage, I realized that day one and two, the autofocus settings on my camera were set to something else. And so half the footage isn't in focus. And for that, I am so sorry. I know it's blurry and really annoying to look at. I mean, the footage you just watched was pretty blurry and I'm so annoyed that I didn't pick up on it until day three. Day three is all in focus, but it's very annoying that it's all out of focus and that I just didn't realize my settings were all messed up. While we're at my bedside table, I thought I would do a little update on the books that I've been reading. I mean, well, the one, the purple book. I have had a couple of questions asking me what my thoughts are. I'm only halfway through it. I didn't read for about a week and it's okay. Like it's a tiny bit spicy, which is not usually my thing, but I don't know how I feel about it. It's pretty straightforward so far. It's very simple. The plot so far has been very simple. Nothing too crazy has happened. I don't know if the second half of the book is gonna get more interesting or more intense, but I think the best way I can describe it is simple. But then again, I don't really know how to review books. So that's my answer of how I feel about the purple book, whatever it's called, I can't remember. Unfortunately yours, that's it. Welcome to my dresser of shame. It looks pretty bad right now, especially these flowers. These are so sad and so gross. I need to take them out. They died about a week after having them and they've been sitting there for about two or three days because I've just been too lazy to take them out. So that's getting done. And then I have a delightful collection of mugs because I've been drinking tea and coffee like crazy decaf because I'm still having issues with my anxiety and my feeling like my heart is racing all the time. So it's been a bit nicer to not have caffeine, but yeah, I just drink way too much tea and coffee. I hate my dresser like this. I swear the flowers make it without flowers. It looks so boring. I might change that vase out for a pot plant until I can get some new flowers later in the week. That is so much better. I just think it needs some flowers or a plant, something to make it look a little more lively. I'm gonna grab my cloth though, cause it looks like I have a bit of paint dripped down the side of that pot. I'm just gonna keep the pink vase there with the black little container as well. I think it just adds a little bit of character. I should probably maybe remove this leaf just here cause it's so yellow now. There we go. And I gave it a water, so I think we're good. I realized I probably haven't watered that plant for a couple of weeks, it really needed it. Thankfully, it was a really warm day, so the bed sheets dried really quickly. You may notice that I have a second pillowcase on the pillows. I don't have a pillow protector. I keep forgetting to get one, so I just have an extra pillowcase on the pillows for that, I guess, extra layer of pillow protection. And then don't even get me started on the whole bed sheet situation with the doona cover being too small for the actual doona. It just drives me insane every time I try to do my bed. My bed looks terrible. Like this is really bad. This is what happens when you have a duna cover that is the wrong size. I have a king duna with a queen duna cover and it just looks so bad. It takes a couple days for it to settle a little. I just have to kind of push things around. 
it'll do. I'm not gonna get a new one because I'm gonna be leaving soon and it's fine. But yeah, just didn't realize it was a king cover and we got a queen set. I am not feeling too good today. I'm so happy that my bed is nice and clean, so it's gonna make going to bed so nice tonight, but I'm just not feeling too great. A little bit low energy, and I've done my bed in basically this half of my bedroom and also my dresser. I think tomorrow though, I'm gonna come back and do some more. I was doing a bit of admin work in between cleaning today, and I think I'll probably do the same. So I might do that today, tomorrow, maybe the next day, and just space it out over a few days. You know, you don't have to do it all in one day. I hate my desk. It is my least favorite part of my room. And if I was staying here, I would get a whole new desk. One, I'm never getting a glass desk again. I don't like being able to see through the desk. And two, I do not recommend the hard, shiny marble contact paper from Kmart. It is terrible. You want to get the soft matte marble contact paper that bends and wraps around whatever you're sticking it to so much better than this hard one. And I just, I hate everything about my desk. I don't know what to do about it. I don't know if it's worth doing anything about it seeing as I'm only gonna be here for a couple more weeks, but I hate it and I have no incentive to actually clean this space properly because I just, I don't even wanna sit here. One of the things that I want to add to a regular routine of mine in 2024 is to iron my clothes or at least just prepare them to be ready to wear because I avoid wearing some of my clothes just because they're not ironed and I hate having unironed clothes. And I just realized I'm gonna need to flip this ironing board around the other way because I want this smaller end to be down that end because I iron, yep, that's the way it's gotta go. I just want to make time this year to iron my clothes, not necessarily every single time I wash them or every week, but you know, at least setting myself aside some time to be able to iron my clothes and have them just hanging in my wardrobe ready to go. I also have my D pillar and my lint rollers up here. And this is another thing that I wanna to add to my routine is to just regularly stay on top of keeping my clothes looking neat and clean because I think it'll just make getting ready for things so much more easier, more efficient. And if all of my clothes are ready to go, it'll be much easier to pick an outfit. The dress that I am currently ironing is a new purchase. This is a one shouldered black dress that I bought from Portman's. You would like to to see what it looks like on. I did upload a TikTok with it, so I'll have that link below. It is beautiful. It's like nice and fitted at the waist. It's got pockets, which is amazing. But yeah, so I am going to iron a few pieces of my clothes, also defluff them and lint roll them. Maybe use the little depiller if there's anything I wanna depill. I think I might have to turn the iron up. Like some of these creases are just not quite coming out right now. I 
I uploaded a shorter version of this video on TikTok and I had a comment suggesting a steamer and I love steamers. I think they're great and I do use them, but I find that they're not very good on very thick or heavier fabrics. And I much prefer how crisp an iron looks, but ironing can be a lot harder, especially when you have pleats and gathers. Both of these dresses have plenty of pleats and gathers and the best way to do it is on the corner of the iron and I'll always be holding a piece of the dress where the gathers are up. I find if I elevate it a little bit and then just gently shimmy the iron in, I don't really know how to explain that, just like move it sort of back and forth gently into the creases, then it manages to get every single piece of the fabric without pressing on those folds and making it look even more creased. Like that's the problem with ironing. You can't just go straight on over all of the pleats because then everything will be super creased. You do have to kind of maneuver the fabric and pull it up to be able to get in between all of the gathers and make it smooth. But I love ironing. I think ironing just makes your clothes look so crisp in comparison to a steamer, but I still use steamers all the time, especially on lighter fabrics like satins and things like that. It's so good for that. A couple of extra things that I have with me today. I feel like this is a little spa day for my clothing. I'm just treating my clothes, you know? I have a small pair of scissors to cut off any loose threads. I also have a sticky lint roller to remove all of the fluff because now that I'm around cats and dogs, I am covered in fluff all the time. And then also an electric D-pillar lint remover as well to be able to get off all of those tiny balled up bits of fabric that are just stuck to your clothing. I thought I would give you a quick little finished room tour. It's nice and fresh in here. We've got my bed, my bedside table. Next to that I have my mirror, my desk. It's actually usable now because there's space for me to sit. It's still a bit of a disorganized mess, but you know, it does the job. My tripods are such an eyesore, really. I should probably put them in the cupboard. And then I have my dresser with my plant and all of my makeup and accessories. And then back behind me is my wardrobe that is a disaster, but I have the two dresses and the pants all hanging up now, ready to grab. I realized I'm not quite ready to just have everything in packing cubes. I'm still gonna hang some stuff up just for now. I've been wearing dresses a lot cause it's just been nice and hot, but that's my finished, organized, clean room. This week I decided to clean my bathroom at night time and I feel only a few weeks ago I was saying I was becoming much more of a night owl and that was really only short lived because I just wanna go to bed. I'm so tired and I regret staying up to clean my bathroom at night time, but I did it anyway, powered through and got it all done. I always start with the shower and I have a new item for my shower, which has actually been really, really handy. This is the worst shower I have ever used. The design is so poor. I can't remember the story of what happened when the house was being built, but it definitely wasn't supposed to be like this. There's no lip at the bottom of the shower that stops the water from just spilling out everywhere and then on top of that there's no glass door there's nothing to stop you having the water run off your arms out onto the floor so the bathroom basically floods every single time i use it and i mentioned it in my last cleaning video and thankfully some of you suggested some really good ideas one in particular was to just have a squeegee on hand so i picked one up in my february reset video from Woolworths, it was only like $4.50, so super cheap. And I just leave it in the shower with me. And when I get out of the shower, I pull back my bath mat and I squeegee all the water back into the shower. 
and it almost immediately just dries. So I don't have to worry about the shower floor remaining wet for hours on end. So it's been so handy. Best part about it too is it doubles up when I clean so I can squeegee down the glass window after I finish washing it. And it's just been the best little extra thing that I have added to the shower and it just it just saves me so much trouble with having a wet floor after a shower. And I did have a couple of other suggestions of these silicon dam things that you can buy off Amazon to put onto the floor. But the ones that I were looking at involved a little bit of a uh, tricky installation process. And I just figured, you know what, I'll try the squeegee. It seems easy. I don't actually have to glue anything or stick anything or seal anything. I can just use it. And it has been so handy so far. So if you have trouble with a flooding bathroom, Using a squeegee just to get all the water to the drain is very, very handy because it dries so fast. Today when I went to clean the toilet, I realized I had run out of toilet bowl cleaner. So I just skipped over that part of cleaning and I will pick up some more when I go to get some groceries and run some errands tomorrow. Kind of annoying that I can't do a full clean without it, but it's fine. I just wipe down the outside of the toilet. When I clean the toilet, I like to wear gloves and I also like to use disposable wipes. I know they're not the best, but when it comes to the toilet, I just like to do that. And then on the far left of the toilet, the steam mop doesn't actually fit down the side. So I always just use a wipe to actually clean the floor as well in there because it's the only way that I can get it done. To finish up the bathroom, I am going to steam mop the floors. You know, I've never owned my own steam mop and I've never really used them before until I came home and I started cleaning the bathroom. I actually don't know the brand of the mop. I might go and have a look at it and maybe see if I can find some that are similar or find that exact one. But I really quite like it. I do find it very, very easy to clean the bathroom floor. Not sure about the rest of the house. I mean, we do have polished concrete floors here, so it's probably very, very easy to clean the floors here with it. But yeah, I really, really like having a steam mop. I also got myself some fresh towels, gave the little snake plant a water, which it is doing so much better in this bathroom. It was in the living room originally and he was really kind of not doing well. And I put it in the bathroom a couple of months ago and it is now thriving. And then I also cleaned off the mirror, gave that a good wipe down and that was all of my bathroom clean. So I hope you have enjoyed this cleaning motivation video and I will see you in my next video.